saving the best until last, we have the Motor City Madman, the stranglehold king himself, Ted Nugent, joining us for the next 20-plus minutes to talk about the state of this country, the state of this world. Ted Nugent, I've got to say that uh, I'd love to see you as a vice presidential running mate with Donald Trump. Uh, there's a lot of bad stuff happening, but I can feel the energy, the reawakening of America, liberty rising. I've been very negative in the past, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but are you not feeling the tectonic, explosive, volcanic energy, the rebirth of America beginning to happen, or am I wrong, Ted Nugent? Well, Alex, Joe, number one, uh, the truth is so glaring right now, the self-evident truth, the common sense, the logic that you uh, share with everybody on your programs and in, uh, with your voice. I salute you for that. But, you know, here it is, December 2015, and the whole world sucks. America sucks less, but we got a government and a media and academia that are trying to catch up with Indonesia. Uh, but let me tell you, Alex, just to make sure we stay on a positive note here, though we will delve into the horror stories that run amok, um, America sucks less. But during the hunting season in Texas, Alex, it don't suck at all. I mean, Absolutely. I'm, bringing you, I'm bringing you effervescent glowage of uh, spirit wild backstrap jihadi um, celebration. But as I celebrate the good, I celebrate the good because America still has unlimited good. But it is our job, it is our sworn duty, if you have a brain, if you have a soul, you will be more like Alex Jones and Ted Nugent and the Hellraisers because our number one responsibility, as we the people, in this unique and unprecedented experiment in self-government, our job as Americans, job one, raise hell and demand accountability. Remember the Alamo. Remember Concord Bridge. We didn't meet the British at Concord Bridge to serve tea, be tolerant, and see how many guns or what kind of guns they came to take. We met them at Concord Bridge, and we blew their punk-ass brains out. And I smell the beast approaching the door more and more every day. So thank you for spreading the truth. Thank you for spreading the logic and common sense. But let me tell you, I'm not just going to give you a Ted Nugent, you know, ultra shine on what Alex Jones represents because I travel this country. I've already shared 20 some hunting camps with working hard, playing hard Americans, people that still set their alarm clock and still dedicate themselves to be productive assets for a strong America. And what you represent, Alex, what I talk about is not an Alex Jones, Ted Nugent hunch. We presume nothing, but the families I share campfires with, remember, Alex, it's intimate. These people don't hold back. If Ted Nugent represents anything, it's that is nothing, nothing is sacred, and you can unleash the beast. And when they express their beliefs about this criminal empire in the government of the United States of America, this freedom-hating, America-hating punk president, and his entire the globalists day. should surrender right now. They have no idea that the sleeping giant is rising. Oh, it's rising. That's my point, is these people still work really, really hard. But as we've talked about in the past, the enemy isn't necessarily the ultimate enemy. The real enemy of America is lazy-ass, apathetic, uninvolved, non-participating Americans. Amen. Who, who don't know their, their mayor, they don't know their governor, they don't know their senator, they don't, they don't know nothing. Those people claim they believe in the Second Amendment, and they're not even members of the NRA, Alex. These people are rock-solid in the liability column of America. But again, as I shine the light on the bad and the ugly, there's still increasing good out there because more and more families, more and more hardworking moms and dads and just people that are in the asset column of America, they now recognize the curse, the, uh, the self-inflicted curse that is Barack Obama and the liberal Democrats who hate freedom, who hate the Constitution, who hate the Bill of Rights. They don't believe in self-defense. They don't believe in independence. They don't believe in being the best that you can be. They are intentionally on a runaway freight train to weaken America and to reward the bloodsuckers while they pun punish the producers. So I know I'm preaching to the choir out there. No, no, but, but I want you to elaborate. How could Europe 
How could Obama openly open us up to radical Islam, let them kill us, and then Obama goes to France and Holland goes there and says, we saved you, pass global government carbon taxes to show the jihadis, and Putin is exposing that uh, Turkey's buying the ISIS oil. I mean, this is crazy. It's, it's, uh, I mean, my brain is tested. By the hour, not just occasionally, not just daily, by the hour, what this president does, what this government does, what the academia is. What do they think they're doing? Let me, you're with. a smart guy. I mean, you really are. I respect you. What do you think they're thinking up there? Don't they know that they're just wrecking the country and pissing everybody off? You know, Alex, uh, if, if uh, and I'm going to answer your question, but allow me to elaborate and get there. I believe that the reason America is stupid apathetic, uncaring, slovenly, and allowed Barack Obama to become president, allowed Lois Lerner not to be shackled and imprisoned, allowed Nancy Pelosi to tell the people she works for that we don't need to read the document, we need to sign it to find out what's in it. And I could go on and on with a thousand examples that would make you throw up. But ultimately, it's because we didn't play old yeller in our school system Back when it was produced, from kindergarten to 12th grade, there should have been an old yeller day. Then there should have been a patriot movie day. Then there should have been a brave heart movie day. Then, of course, there should have been a dirty, hairy day. But because we haven't taught self-sufficiency, the, 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 the instinct to self-preservation and self-defense with the utility of the Second Amendment, that is why we are in the... I wish I could use the word cluster. It's a military term, but I'll give you the first two syllables, cluster. There is a cluster whack in existence today. And here's the bottom line if we would have been taught old yeller. I don't care why he's foaming at the mouth. I don't care how he got rabies. He's rabid. Get rid of the damn dog. When old yeller brings you slippers, give him a biscuit. When he foams at the mouth, you shoot him between the eyes. Any questions? You're sad about it, but you got to put him in the ground. You've got to do it. America, you got to cleanse this country. No, I'm not talking about shooting anybody. I'm talking about dealing with an outrageous condition that is painful and traumatic and frustrating. But if you don't face the beast, you're dead. You're dead. And that's what's going on. But again, I got to tell you, you know, I'm, I'm rather buoyant and effervescent as I speak with you today because I just got out of my tree stand. I just hung up a beautiful buck with a beautiful arrow and my dog's got fresh liver. I'm so happy I can oh, understand wow. myself. But I'm writing my articles for WND.com. Wait till you read tonight's WND.com piece. Wait till you read even my deer and deer hunting.com. I write these articles and I weave in an absolute declaration of independence. An absolute declaration. Yes, I we must American declare it. We aren't going along with this. Well, it, too many sheep exist, but I think more and more Americans are waking up to their sheepdog duties. And I don't really care why Barack Obama is, a, is the enemy of America. I don't really care why Nancy Pelosi is a brain-dead, vicious freak. I don't, I don't care how Sheila Jackson Lee is allowed to stay in touch. Or why Harry Reid's a piece of crap. I don't understand why Mumbles McReed is allowed to go. Can I, can I, can I entertain your listeners for just a moment? Yes, sir. Can I do my best Harry Reid impersonation? Please. All right. My name is Ted Nugent, and this is just an impersonation on the Alex Jones radio show. But we actually have an elected official that sounds like this. Well, can you see if it's not? Can you confess that? I don't know. Please, I have it. I said, didn't pay his taxes. This, these, these liberal Democrats are some strange subhuman freak. They can't even that talk. Obviously, subhuman freaks vote for. You just hit on my problem. You just hit on my problem, Ted Nugent. Ted, to interrupt, you just hit it. How could we be ruled by such gibbering weirdos? That's what gets to me. These people are pathetic known criminals. It, it, you know, I, if I didn't laugh, I'd probably throw up blood it's so insane but the bottom line is again i don't care how i well i know how it happened but i don't care why america got apathetic i just need to sound the alarm like alex jones does every damn day 
and wake people up that if you don't participate by raising hell and demanding accountability from your elected officials on a daily basis, you are a green door welcome mat for Barack Hussein Obama and the Valerie Jarrett communist maniac. You're bending over. You're be- you're lit- if you're not standing up fighting the beast, you're bending over and taking it in the ass, and that's what liberal Democrats want everybody to do. But I got to tell you, I keep saying I got to tell you, because I do get input. I, you, I, right now I have 20-some million Facebookers. You should read. I was up to 33.6 million Facebookers off and on the last few months because I, I, I reek of self-evident truth and logic and common sense and the evidence to support it. We are alive and well out there, Alex, but we, we haven't raised adequate hell yet. And I think with Trump and Ted Cruz and what I'm hearing, some awakening by some of these GOP guys, now I'm not, I'm not excited yet, but I'm truly, um, uh, re, re, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point of being. We're at least in the game. I agree. People are waking up. Stuff's worse than ever. I'm not even saying we're winning, but at least we're not in a total coma. I'm just wondering why. The, the socialist liberal establishment is so arrogant and so crazy and shooting down Russian airplanes that are bombing ISIS and getting caught buying their oil. I mean, Obama has been caught trying to set up a caliphate. It's true. He does want to overthrow this country. And I just wonder, what is our establishment thinking? I mean, I know they're not perfect, but they really want to put bags on our women's heads? Well, you know, I, I hear hope coming from Ted Cruz and, and hope coming from Donald Trump and I occasionally hear hope from uh, uh, Marco Rubio and uh, Carly Fiorina. I think there's some great people. I don't think they're the, the, uh, the Michael the Archangel quite yet. I think Ted Cruz would make the best president we may have ever had. I'm not endorsing anyone, but I'm I'm in. He's frighteningly intelligent. Yes, and and he's constitutional. He's not a Ted Cruz guy. He's a U.S. constitutional servant, which is what elected employees are supposed to be. In fact, they've taken an oath, a vow to the U.S. Constitution, and they wipe their ass with it every three minutes, except some of my Republican friends. I don't, you know, I don't even, I can't even think of any Democrats that really look like Americans nowadays. I'm absolutely appalled that anybody would put a D after their Well, that's it. That's it. I mean, the Democrat leadership and their constituents now, more and more, literally hate America and have a death score to settle and want to mount our head on the wall like a trophy when this country and our forebears gave these spoiled-ass bitches everything they've got. Yeah, I'm going to put it in the most heartbreaking words that are available to us, Alex, and I want everybody to listen closely. I know I'm just a guitar player, but I'm a father and a husband. I'm an asset to my neighborhood, to my fellow Americans, to my fellow human beings. I'm an asset to the environment, and we could get into detail that in another show. But for some reason, I am contacted every day of my life by heroes of the U.S. military. When they're about to retire or when a flag-draped coffin comes home and the family contacts me, so that's where my energy and that's where my perseverance and that's where my indefatigable patriotism comes from. And you know what these U.S. Marines and these Army heroes and these Navy and these Air Force, you know what they're telling me, Alex? That they're retiring because they're not allowed to be Marines anymore. they got to wear red they're shoes. They're retiring because they're not allowed to be soldiers anymore. And they are absolutely heartbroken and shattered that their commander-in-chief is the enemy. That's not my it's crazy, word, Alex. Those are the words of heroes that have trained to defend and, and, and fight for the American, the U.S. Constitution and freedom. They tell me with, with tears in their eyes that they don't know what to do with the I can't believe it either. Why would the elite that already runs the country want to f- put it down the toilet? But you're right. We really are held by an enemy. Who is that enemy? What do they want to do? How do we stop them, Ted Nugent? Well, we stop them by uh, galvanizing everybody in our family and our co-workers and our friends at church and school and deer camp. We, the people who know self-evident truth and know that the Constitution is the outline for common sense, for freedom and individuality, and for God-given individual rights that were written down so a king or a desperate or an emperor or or some punk could try to take them away from us again, if we know that to be true, if we actually believe that America is the best place and it's on a downward spiral because of the commander-in-chief, then you absolutely must be registered to vote. 
You have to communicate with your elected officials. And in 2016, don't wait for Michael the Archangel, the perfect Republican candidate. If we don't vote Republican in 2016, we will be 